Hello? Hi, Miss Keith. Yes. This is Anita from Lowe's. Hi, this is Anita from State Farm. How, how are you today? It, I'm good. <laughs> Anita from State Farm? Oh, hi there. In this video, I'm going to try and hack my wife and my grandmother. And I'm really putting them to the test. I want to see if they will fall for a classic social engineering attack. The attack I'm using is called pretexting, which basically means I'm creating a story, a fictitious story about who I am, why I'm calling them. And my goal is to get information from them. How much information can I get my wife and my grandmother to give me about themselves? Let's find out. And shout out to CompTIA for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about what I'm doing here, go deeper. I got links below you can check out. And also, please, please, Never hack anyone for any reason. This is for educational purposes only. My first victim is my wife. And here's my pretexting story. Through social engineering, I may have found out, and I do know this to be true, that she's been shopping for a new front door. Yeah, we want a new front door. I don't know. She does things. And she's been shopping at Lowe's. It's a home improvement store here in the US. And I know she actually recently purchased one. So what I plan to do is call her acting like I am Lowe's. More specifically, I'm going to be Anita. My goal is to confirm her order and get her to give me her address or my address and her credit card number. Okay, so two things I have to figure out. How do I make her believe that I'm from Lowe's and how do I become Anita? I'm using this, a Raspberry Pi, to pretend that I am Lowe's. Now, how does that work? I actually installed a phone system on this Raspberry Pi, a 3CX phone system. If you wanna do that yourself, I've got a video right here. But using this phone system, I can change my caller ID, the number I'm calling from to match our local Lowe's store. Now I had to make sure it worked and also wanted to add to the story. So the day before I tested it, I tried calling her and I actually had her in the same room as me. She didn't know what I was doing. I tried calling her. She didn't pick up, but she did see that it was Lowe's and she was like, oh crap, what are they calling me about? Oh man, I should have answered. So she already had the understanding that Lowe's was trying to reach her, which adds a bit more credibility to my attack when I do it the next day. So here we go. Can I get information from my wife? Can I elicit information? That's what we're doing here. That's one of the main attacks in social engineering. Just trying to gain information through a variety of means. Right now we're using all kinds of stuff. We're eliciting information. We're vishing. We are pretexting. Let's do it. Oh, and how do I become Anita? Well, with the voice modifier, of course. Hello? Hi, Miss Keith? Yes. This is Anita from Lowe's. I'm just calling to confirm your door order. Uh, we seem to have misplaced the address on file. Could you confirm the address for installation? The what? The address, your, your, your home address for installation. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, you're kind of like breaking up on the phone. Um, it's... Okay, and what's the zip code? Oh, thank you so much. And also, it seems we uh, don't have a credit card on file. Could you please confirm the credit card you paid with? Um, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable giving that over the phone. Oh, okay. Well, can you at least confirm the last four digits for us? Um, can I just come in? Like, I already paid for it and everything. Yeah, it seems that we may have miscrossed the numbers. It didn't go through just right. Um, yeah, so you can come in. You can just get it to me right now. I can take care of it for you. Okay. I'll come in. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Victim number two. Grandma. Now I feel bad because it's almost too easy. Because grandmas, they are naturally just more trusting. And that's the largest pool of victims when it comes to this kind of stuff. People over the age of 55 are more susceptible to these types of attacks. So what you can do, public service announcement right now, is help the people in your life understand what these attacks mean. Share this video with them. Have them prepared. Maybe test this out on your family as well. Don't really hack them. <laughs> Please don't. But do a little family pen test. See how safe your family actually is. So anyways, pretexting story. Through social engineering, I found that she was complaining about her insurance on social media. So that's who I'm going to become. I'm going to become Anita because she's really good at this. Anita from State Farm. The story I have here, I actually ended up kind of feeling bad about. You'll see here in a moment. But I'm calling to tell her that her payment did not go through last month. Now, again, I do feel bad about this because she thought, man, I'm not covered by my insurance because the payment didn't go through. And that's a common tactic that hackers will use with pretexting. You have a sense of urgency, like you need to do something. And that's what I was doing. So my goal here. Same as what I have with my wife. I want that credit card information. I want your address. And let's see if she falls for it. Oh, and I'm using the same methods as before. To become State Farm, using my trusty pie. To become Anita, using my voice modification. Hey, Mom. Hello? Hi, is this... I'm sorry? Hi, is this... It is. Hi, this is Anita from State Farm. 
How are you today? I'm good. Who is this? Anita from State Farm. Oh, hi there. Hi, I'm just calling to confirm your address for the policy. Okay. What's your current street address? Uh, hold your second. Sure thing. Oh, I couldn't hear because we the TV was on. Oh, that's all right. Uh, it's Claire's Oklahoma seven four seven. Okay, thank you so much. And also, just to confirm, I have I'm talking to the right person. Before I give you any more information, okay. can you confirm the uh, last four digits of the credit card we have on file? You know, I, I can't even hardly hear you. It's like your old speaker. Oh, I'm sorry. We, they got us working from home now, so the, the connection can be terrible. Uh, can you confirm the last four digits of the credit card we have on file? I don't. Uh, I don't have it with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Oh, it's okay. My, my well, the girlfriend's well, house. And, and all that stuff is at home. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at my girlfriend's house right now. Oh, can okay. I, can, Pat, I call, can I call well, you back? Well, Patsy, real quick, just, just so I don't lose you here. Uh, the reason I'm calling is because the credit card we have on file didn't go through for your payment last month. So I can add another one if you want. You can just add it for me right now real quick over the phone. You know, I, I'm sorry. I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We need a new credit card on file. Because your credit card did not go through last payment. What? What you mean? Uh, you mean my my credit card, uh, my insurance policy wasn't paid. That's right. Well, I, let let me. It shows on my bank that it did. Well, that's very strange, Miss. Because uh, over here on our system, we don't see anything. Well, let me let me let me. I'll uh, let me get back with you. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Keith. I appreciate it. Now I have to say, I am super proud of my wife and my grandma. They did not give me the credit card information. Now they did give me their address, which, okay, I'll teach them, but still pretty good. But this little hack was not sophisticated. Watch out. Okay, let's talk about identity theft or identity fraud. Raise your hand if you or someone you know has been affected by identity theft or fraud. I just see thousands of hands going up because it's true. It's one of the most common hacks against everyone right now. And identity theft at its core is pretty simple. It's just someone pretending to be you, which can be crazy easy. In 2019, 14 million people in the US had their identity stolen. That's one out of every 15 people. In fact, every two seconds, someone has their identity stolen. And again, and again. <laughs> so first, how does identity theft happen? Well, if you've been watching this series from the beginning, we've been talking about social engineering attacks. That's how it happens. The first video we talked about, the first thing that hackers do when they start a hack is they gather information. In a lot of cases, this is information that you put out on the internet yourself. Social media, man. The more they learn about you, the easier it is to become you. Now, gathering information can become a bit more offensive, like what I demonstrated earlier when I called my grandmother and my wife, pretending to be, you know, Anita. And we covered what a lot of that looks like in our last video. We got phishing attacks and what I just did, which was a vishing attack using voice or telephone calls to attack someone. And I'm trying to gather information, elicit information from these people. Now that could be for a variety of goals I have, but in many cases, I'm trying to get information about my target so I can maybe become them. And then one of the most killer ways that you can have your identity stolen is something kind of out of your control. And that's the scariest part, right? It's data breaches. I'm gonna put an exclamation point. Actually, let's do a couple of those, maybe three. Data breaches happen all the time. The companies that you trust to keep your usernames, your passwords, prescription information, credit card info, I mean, everything about you. Some company has some of that information, right? And you expect that will remain safe, but that's not always the case. They have breaches where that data is leaked out in mass quantities. Like, check this out. Look at some of the worst data breaches we've had this year. January 22nd, Microsoft. That's scary. A support database holding over 280 million Microsoft customer records, exposing email addresses, IP addresses, support case details, which those support cases could have some crazy information inside them. Okay, <laughs> even a big company like Microsoft is not safe. What else we got? Um, MGM Resorts. Okay, kind of a big deal. This is February 20th of 2020, this year. 10.6 million hotel guests have their personal information posted on a hacking forum. It includes names, home addresses, phone numbers, emails, dates of birth. Like that's enough to impersonate someone, I would say, right? And um, yeah, you can go buy this on the dark web. Oh yeah, this is actually an update. As of July 15th, they found 142 million personal records. Dang. <laughs> Dude, this one's scary. T-Mobile. Holy crap. March 5th of this year, a malicious attack of a third-party email vendor allowed hackers to access an unknown number of customer-sensitive information, which I don't know about you, but 
unknown means a lot to me. Uh, but we're talking names here, addresses, social security numbers, financial account information, government identification numbers, phone numbers, it means everything, right? That is terrifying. So you may be watching this and going, uh, am I okay? Is my account okay? I don't know. But you can find out. There are websites that help us figure this out. There's a very popular one called Have I Been Pwned, which means Have I Been Breached or Hacked. Put in your email address, an email address that you might use for all your accounts, and see if it's been discovered in a database breach, a data breach. I want to put mine in right here, and let's see if I got pwned. Yeah, 16 breach sites. That's not, um, doesn't make me happy. Okay, Adobe, Bitly. Oh my gosh. The breach contained over 9.3 million unique email addresses, usernames, and hashed passwords. Now, fun fact, I made a video about how you could crack or hack passwords a while back. You can watch that right here. And this involved attaining hashed passwords from a database that you can then use tools to crack those passwords. And many people ask, well, how do I get those hashes? Where do those come from? These breaches right here, they happen all the time. So this is a great website to see if you have been pwned and what do you do with that? Well, if you've been pwned, well then go change your password right now. Most likely a hacker already has your password. And that's another thing too. I'm kind of going on a rant here, but if you don't maintain a process of changing your password regularly, then a hacker probably already has your password. It's on a database, it's on a forum, it's, on a, it's for sale somewhere. That's why you wanna change your password on the regular. Okay, let's say they steal your identity. What happens then? What, what can they do with it? The answer is a lot. I mean, sky's the limit. <laughs> they can do whatever they freaking want. Like for me, recently, like last week, someone got my credit card number. I got a notification from my bank that someone was trying to buy something from a vending machine. And they were like, hey, is this you? And I'm like, no, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. So I had to cancel my card and get a new one. So it can be as simple as someone just attaining your credit card information and trying to do something. Now you won't always be as lucky as me to get someone who's just stupid enough to only make a dollar purchase at a vending machine. You might have someone go into Micro Center and try to buy an NVIDIA 3080 graphics card or a laptop or a car or whatever. If they get your social security number, they can pretend to be you and they apply for credit. They could go buy a car or, and this is becoming more popular, they could pretend to be you and a more sophisticated attack to maybe attack your friends. I was just talking with my mother-in-law last Sunday and she had an old friend pop up on Facebook Messenger saying, hey, how you doing? And they started having a conversation but she noticed that the phrasing was a bit weird. Didn't seem like her friend. Well, it turns out her friend got hacked and a bunch of people she knew received these same types of messages. I'm sure you've had the same thing happen to you before as well. I think it ended up that the friend actually asked her to buy her an iTunes gift card, which does seem small and insignificant, but if that person was asking all their friends, like say 50 friends, that's not, a, that's not a bad cash in right there. Not a bad payoff. So how can you protect yourself from identity theft? The short answer is just be vigilant because you have to assume that whatever accounts you have can be hacked. You have to assume that whatever information you think might be secure can be leaked. Now what I do personally is I have a few services that will monitor my accounts, the dark web, all kinds of information to make sure my information isn't put out there. You've probably seen this stuff before. There's LifeLock, um, a, a bunch of your banks probably offer it as a free service. And basically it's just another pair of eyes, another set of eyes looking out for you, seeing if your data does end up in a breach. Now I wanna say this too, identity theft doesn't have to just be personal. It doesn't have to be specific to one person. It could just be someone impersonating an employee. Like, think about this. Actually, you know, think about your company. Let's say you work at an office building. When you go to work, when you walk into that building, I'm assuming they have some physical security controls, like maybe a, a badge reader, you have to scan it on the door. Beep, door opens. That's good security, you should have that. So let's say you're walking in from lunch, go to the door, scan your badge, whatever. You're full, you're tired, ready to burn out the rest of this day. But then someone comes up behind you. They're wearing business casual clothing like everyone else in your company, and they look like they probably work there. They're walking up like they're just gonna use their badge as well and walk in. Now you feel that social pressure immediately, right? What are you gonna do? You're probably gonna hold that door open. Like how, how rude would it be to just go, oh no, no, shut the door, you can't come in, you have to use your own badge. That's what we should do, <laughs> that's what we should do. I've never done that, <laughs> it would feel so bad. Even me knowing security standards, I can't just shut the door in someone's face. So we have this hacker impersonating an employee. They probably staked out, camped out outside the office building, noticed what kinds of people walked in, what they were kind of wearing, we, they learned the dress code look the part, could be holding a clipboard, looking really official, and they just follow you right in. That's called tailgating. You hold the door open for someone because you have that social pressure of holding the door open for someone. Like you have to, right? You have to. You don't have to, by the way, don't do that. Resist the urge. And once they're in, they're in. Now they're not impersonating anyone specific. They could be Bob, they could be Fred, Nosferatu, whatever. They're just impersonating an employee. And if you walk around with confidence like you're supposed to be there, guess what? 
hardly anyone's going to question that. Like, do you know everyone at your company? Could be a new hire. Could be someone visiting. Like, you don't know. This kind of stuff, social engineering, it's crazy easy to do. Just takes a bit of confidence. And anyone can do it. Well, that's about all I have today. If you like this video, hit that like button. It makes the hackers angry. And if you like what I'm doing here on my channel, man, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're always notified when I post a video. And again, shout out to our sponsor, CompTIA. If you are studying for your Security Plus, which if you don't have your Security Plus, you definitely should. They've got fantastic resources, including vouchers to take your exam. I've got links below. Now question for you. Do you have any good stories about identity theft? Odds are you probably do. It happens to everyone. So let me know in the comments below. Yep. That's all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.